film on, bud. Let's go. I promise you'll feel better after. Promise. Good boy. It's me from the future. I just wanted to quickly pop in and kind of explain things just in case you're watching this and you weren't familiar with why I got homebug neutered or you're not familiar with my rats and what's been going on with them. I just wanted to quickly explain the whole situation just so this whole video makes sense. So Humbug is my male rat. He's about eight months old, I think. Um, and I did get one of my other rats previously neutered, which is Crumble. And he was the one that was mostly aggressive towards Humbug. And I got him neutered because I just didn't want to introduce him to my new rats, knowing that he was as aggressive as he was. So that happened, that went well. Then I introduced all four of them together and Humbug started showing signs of being hormonally aggressive. We didn't have issues with the initial stages of introductions, which I think people got a bit confused about. It was when I was trying to have them live together later on in the introductions all together in a large cage that the issues started to come out and a lot of people were also doubting that he was hormonally aggressive in the first place. He definitely was, I've been living with him and watching him on a daily basis. Even with people he was starting to get a bit more aggressive. He was puffing up, hissing, even with me just trying to come near him or to pick him up to put him back into the cage. It got to a point where he was getting so aggressive that I actually had to wrap him into a towel to get him back into the cage during free run, which is not ideal. It's not ideal for him to be living with that much aggression within his system. So he was definitely aggressive and he did need neutering. So pretty much as soon as I realized that introductions were not gonna progress any further, I just could not get them past a certain stage without him attacking and injuring the other boys. I realized that his hormonal aggression was pretty much putting a stop to that, which it doesn't matter how much you try different methods, if they have hormonal aggression, they need neutering to fix that. So as soon as I realized that was the case, I booked him in to get neutered. So his original appointment was actually a week before the clips you've just watched. So if you're watching this and wondering why it's taken such a long time for a video, that's why his appointment actually got cancelled and delayed. My vet actually had quite a serious injury, which obviously meant she couldn't do the operation. So then I was left trying to find another vet. I did obviously eventually find one, but a lot of the vets that I've been recommended, they had like a month or two month wait for operations, which it was weighing up whether to use a vet that I was familiar with and leaving him for like a month, two months, which to me was not an option. I could not leave him in this state for any longer or risking it slightly and going with a vet that I have been recommended. She does do exotics like ferrets and stuff, but because I've never used her, that did make me really nervous. So it was weighing up which was gonna be the best option and getting it as soon as possible was the best option for us. So there was that initial delay, obviously with booking his appointment and then it being moved a week later, which was super stressful because he is living by himself Obviously this is not an ideal situation and rats should not be living by themselves, but he did pose a risk to the other rats. Unlike Crumble where it was only occasionally that he was attacking them, Humbug was attacking even Crumble all the time, constantly chasing them, constantly pestering them, and it just was not safe to leave him in with them, but it's also not safe to put Crumble in with him after his neuter. So he is gonna have to be by himself, which is unfortunate, but it is part of the process, it's something that has to happen, and it's the reason we're getting him neutered in the first place, so hopefully his hormones die down soon, and he can go back in with the other boys as soon as possible once he's recovered and his hormones are no longer causing him issues. So I've just set up his hospital cage. If you want to know more in depth about how to set it up, what kind of things to include, I talk more about that in the video where I got crumble neutered, which was quite recent, so I'll link that in the iCards and the description. But as you can see, I've placed his hospital cage inside of the main cage. Obviously the other boys are up there at the top, but I think it's actually gonna work really well. Firstly, just to give me a bit more space because I don't have as much space in this room as I'd like and having the cage on the floor is quite annoying for six weeks. So because he was living in this section anyway, I've just put that cage inside and he can't also be in like the full cage just yet because he's not really supposed to climb up because he could strain his stitches. So for now he is going in his hospital cage but I've also contained it into this one as well. The second reason I thought to do this is because free roaming the rats when they're separated 
is a nightmare, they're trying to bother him, he's trying to bother them, and obviously they can actually injure each other by biting each other through the bars, which is not ideal, so Freeman was quite stressful for the time they were separated, um, as you can see the cat trees there, they tried to get in there, so I was having to have Humbug in a carrier, take him out the room, just to let these guys out to play, so it was quite frustrating, I'm thinking with this, obviously you've got the added double layer, I can shut this, and then they're not going to be able to touch each other through the bars, so hopefully that should stop that problem too. So yeah, that's all set up for him now, I just have to wait for a call from the vets, hopefully it won't be too long, and then I can go pick him up. Good boy, you tired? You're still sleepy? Good boy, you did such a good job. You didn't bite no one? Apparently you were very angry though. <laughs> You're home, buddy. Your cute little name tag. Would you like to come out? So I actually got the call to come and pick him up at 2 o'clock, they asked me to pick him up at 4 o'clock which I've just done and that's given him a good couple of hours in the incubator and to come around so he's a lot more alert than Crumble was. I think Crumble had only just come out of surgery and it took him a very long time to come around so he's had a nice time chilling in the incubator at the hospital and he's very alert which is good. So I'm actually not too sure whether he's been neutered abdominally or scrotally. Some of you guys are really confused when Crumble was neutered through his abdomen. Each vet just has a different preferred method, and that was, I guess, her preferred method. But I'm not too sure with this vet which one they chose to go with, so it's going to be a complete surprise. I am going to check and just have a quick look, just to have an idea of what it looks like now, so I can compare that to tomorrow and the next day and the day after that, just to keep an eye on it and make sure that nothing is changing. So we're going to attempt to do that now. Hi, buddy. How are you feeling? A bit sore. I know. It's for a good cause though. Oh baby, is it hurting? So as you can see he is actually side sucking which is a sign that he's in pain which is to be expected, I'm not surprised. They did say they've given him some painkillers and I should give him the next ones tomorrow but bless him, he's in pain aren't you bud? Go for drinkies. Don't climb. Don't do it. No, don't do it. Oh, for God's sake. Humbug. So we've just got all of his medication in this bag. I did make sure they gave me antibiotics this time, just because I don't want a whole repeat of the whole abscess thing that Crumble had. Those should hopefully help to prevent any infections. At the end of the day, if we did get some sort of abscess, that could possibly slow down the process of getting him back in with his friends as soon as possible, which is one of the most important things. So he's got painkillers, he's also got antibiotics. They're all in pre-drawn out doses in this bag, which makes things a whole lot easier. Ready? Medicine time. Whoa. Hungry boy. <laughs> Good boy, is that nice? Definitely no medicine in there, just more paste. Wow, yum yum. So it's a week later now and he's doing so well. I think he's doing a lot better than Crumble was. Obviously I demanded that he was put on antibiotics just to prevent any abscesses forming, and so far so good, he's not had any issues, he's not bothered his stitches, he's not tried to chew them, he's not been in too much pain or seems irritated, he's very very hyperactive which is good, and he just seems better in himself already, there's tiny tiny differences, obviously it will take a couple of weeks, but he does seem less huffy and hissy at me which is good, but today we're actually taking him back to his follow-up appointment, just so the vet can check over his stitches and the wound, and just to check up on how he's doing, so we're about to go and do that now. Come on then, buddy. I know how much you like your dainty paws hammock. But we have to go to the vets. Can you come in? Come on then. <laughs> Looking good. Okay, we are back from the vets. My lipstick is literally all over my face from wearing a mask, but his appointment went well. Just as I was holding him up for her to check him over, he projectile peed everywhere, which was nice. Um, but the appointment went well. She's happy with how he's looking and how he's recovering. He doesn't need to go back or anything, so it's really nice that things have actually gone to plan for once. 
so yeah not much else to update you all i have to do now is put him back probably into this main cage just to give him a bit more space and then obviously wait for his hormones to die down and then introduce him back to the other guys which obviously is going to be a little while yet but i will make another video hopefully this time it'll be a bit more successful it's probably the quickest vet trip i've ever had it takes him about half an hour to get there so half an hour to get back so all around it's like an hour round trip and i think we must have been in there like 30 seconds but it's worth it just to get the all clear do you want to get back in your cage here he is hates me as usual come on then good boy would you like a shreddy for being a good boy good boy <laughs> So I just realised something, when I dropped him off to get neutered, obviously I provided him with a water bottle. Then when I got home, obviously I was so focused on making sure that he was okay. It only took me until I put him back into his cage that I realised they never gave me the water bottle back. So I called them up and I was like, do you by any chance have a water bottle lying around anywhere? And they found it, they put it behind reception for me to pick up. And I've just forgotten to pick it up, so that's their water bottle now. I'm not driving an hour round trip just to get a water bottle, but I can't believe I forgot to pick it up again. So that is it for today's video. I hope it was insightful and you enjoyed it. If you can enjoy watching a rat get neutered and recovering from it. I did also want to quickly just let you guys know that I've opened a PO box. So this is something that I've been thinking about for a while and some of you have also been asking because I love when you guys draw me things. I've got a whole wall of digital art that you guys have drawn me but it's really hard to print things out if you guys have hand drawn them. It's really hard to actually get that in like physical form. So a lot of you have been asking if you can send me artwork or letters and I've not had a PO box this whole time. I finally opened one because a lot of you have been asking and I thought it was finally time. So please don't feel like you have to send me anything. I'm purely opening this just in case you want to send me a letter or a photo or something you've drawn me because a lot of people have been asking me about that. Also, it's going to be super helpful just in case there's any brands out there. I've had a couple of brands ask to send me things and I'm just nervous about giving out my personal address. So I've not been able to accept things like that that people have wanted to send me. So if you're happening to watch this and you're a brand that's been trying to send me something for a while, you can now do that. The PO box is linked in the description. But I just wanted to open it for those two reasons. Please don't feel like you have to send me anything. Please don't feel like you have to send the animals anything. I'm just opening it just to make things easier for anyone that does want to send me stuff. You can now do that. So I just wanted to quickly let you know I have opened a PO box and the link to that is in the description with all of the details about how to send stuff and the address. So that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to everyone that's been asking about Hamburg and wishing him well. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.